to welcome Jan Mito from Cast Business School now. Now, if I speak I mean, to a business audience about technology, after 30 seconds, the CEO has switched off. So, okay, fine, that's the CIO stuff. I mean, I don't care. Now, this is, I think, a big problem, because, I mean, uh, why is it a big problem? We speak about the digital, trans digital transformation, and we talk about the fourth industrial revolution, because this is not uh, just about technology per se. I mean, like electricity, uh, steam and electronics uh, in the previous revolution changed completely institutions, society, and business. Uh, digital is, I mean, is likely, it's already changing completely the way in which, for example, customers behave. So <clears throat> this is a transformation that goes deep. And customers, for example, when they become connected, they are not any longer what we used to know. I mean, connected customers, uh, have, uh, yes, perhaps they, are mo they have more power for different reasons. I'm going to go very fast. But at the same time, uh, there is a lot of research showing that uh, too, much, too many choices uh, spoil the broth. So they paralyze customers. So how do we manage the tension between potentially more power and potentially more uh, para paralysis in customers? Uh, regulation. I mean, regulation, we, you think, we think that, I mean, we are operating in institutional vacuum, but sooner or later, regu regulation will catch up, and uh, new market failures are uh, emerging. So what, what determines uh, the action and, in, and <coughs> the, inter <coughs> the intervention of the regulator is quickly changing. The Ofcom, two years ago, was not even remotely thinking about Facebook. Recently, they've started looking at Facebook. So, what, what is the definition of market failure is changing very quickly, both from an economic perspective and from a political perspective. And then, I mean, competition. Now, everyone knows about competition. I take usually, here they are more represented, I think, the, leg, the, 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 the FinTech or the, tech, or the big or technology companies. So everyone speaks about competition, and tech, tech competition is changing. It's much more technology-based, and then uh, rather than subject matter-based. Now, I'm going to show you how I use your technology, right? This is a study that I've done uh, it's a, a, from 2006, 2006 onwards. This is, you know that, I mean, to be listed in the London Stock Exchange, uh, London, in the New York Stock Exchange, you need to file a 10K document. It's a, it's a compulsory one. There is no other way around. So what I, want, I wanted to understand is, Okay, financial services, okay? How are they adopting artificial intelligence and more broadly, digital technologies? And this adoption, does it have, does it have implication on the boundary of the firm, okay? I, I mean, I, I have trained a piece of AI to say, okay, listen, these are all the documents that we have. Now, this is how a bank looks like. This is an insurance as, as it looks like. And then, have a look at this. So the two type, is insurance, over time, AI struggles more and more to recognize an insurance as an insurance. Over time, AI um, struggles more and more to recognize, or actually, is confused and start to recognize insurance as a bank, right? Struggles, I mean, to recognize a true type bank is recognized as an insurance, and then the bank as a bank is declining. Clear? So what is happening, I mean, when people, when companies adopt the technology that you are, real, that you are developing, banks and insurances are becoming much more similar. Now, this, is, this has a lot of implications, because, I mean, we all think about the new competition from fintech, from big tech, but even competition is changing vis-a-vis -vis the legacy competitors. Now, I'm gonna, not going to bother you with the, the very detailed results and, I mean, what sectors is more affected and which one is less affected. For example, credit and uh, life insurance are much less affected by digitization than uh, investment banking or sale insurance. The message that I want to leave you with is that you are not, I mean, mostly, you are not uh, neutral vis-a-vis -vis the business in which you enter. Okay? Now, having said that, the point becomes, okay, from the perspective of the CEO, 
what are the capabilities that you are offering? I mean, you can go very technology and the CEO switch, the CEO switch off, or we can try to translate, and I was presenting a paper at Computer Science at King's, just to try to understand how we can bridge the computer scientists that understand everything about AI and stability, all the, the, these things, and the business view, which is a more helicopter view. So from the perspective of the business, what do you offer? in terms of capabilities. Now, you offer, okay, before going ahead, I mean, clearly, it's clear who is winning and who is losing. This is the market cap I mean, uh, of companies in 2006, 2016, and now we can add 2019. Who were the winners in terms of market cap in 2006? I mean, what is the prevailing color? Financial services were the winners, right? I mean, it's, and energy. Who are the winners in 2016? And I mean, if you stretch to 2019, just to give you an idea, General Electric, that it was almost, let's say, 300 billion dollars, yesterday was 80 billion. So they have lost another 20 billion of valuation. Amazon, that was, of 300, let's say, 380, yesterday was 900, 940, something like that, almost 1 trillion. So you, I mean, we are speaking about financial services. Technology is not only changing competition, customers, institutions, but also is changing, I mean, winners and losers across the economy. It doesn't look like that, tech, that financial services, legacy, legacy financial services, are the ones that are better positioned to win. And I mean, the one trillion race has been won by Apple, even if now Apple, I mean, has gone a little bit further down and, and Amazon and Microsoft are the front runners, but clearly there is an issue here. Okay, I'm gonna skip this. Now, if you speak in terms of change management and you start saying, okay, the, the, the sky is falling, okay? Now, the sky is falling doesn't really motivate a short-term reaction, but it doesn't motivate and doesn't trigger long-term real transformation of businesses. I mean, what research shows that, I mean, scaring people, even people that are at risk of dying, if you tell them, I mean, if you don't take this medicine, you, you might die, or you are very likely to die, after six months, people after heart surgery start, I mean, that's I mean, very, very scientific and systematic, stop taking medicines. Because I mean, they forget, because they think I mean, life will move on. What is much, more, what's much stronger to instill change in businesses is not scare people, but say, okay, if you don't take this medicine, it's not that I mean, you will die, you will not bring your, your daughter to the altar. And that's a very different kind of motivation that has been proven to be focusing on the opportunity, much more powerful to, to trigger deep and uh, broad change. Now, the opportunity, trillion more, trillion less, uh, it's 14 trillions. So now, 14, 13, 12, nobody knows. IBM estimates that, I mean, the, the contribution of digital technologies to the world GDP in the next three, four years is almost like bringing another China GDP into the economy. Now, that's kind of, I mean, a, a huge opportunity that, I mean, it doesn't look like financial services are really uh, grasping and taking. So what the, the CEO now is interested. So 14 trillions looks like something very interesting, right? I mean, so let's see, I mean, not only the, the challenge, but also the massive opportunity. So uh, what does this, the, the company usually do? So usually company had an information technology core, a business model around it, and then consumers and broader stakeholders they were serving. So what I mean, from my business perspective, emerges that very often, so that was once upon a time, the first reaction of businesses to digital transformation is, you know what, let's, before we had IT, now let's call it digital, let's throw some money there, be the digital core, and things will happen, right? And so we build a digital core and things will happen. Now, BNP Paribas, three billions on digital transformation. And then nothing happens, okay? So what is the story here? That, and the story is that, I mean, what technology is doing in terms of digitization, AI, uh, in terms of cloud, I mean, you know better of everything. These capabi technological capabilities are incredibly important and whatever will come, and they will constitute the new oxygen for organization. 
right? That is going to be the new oxygen. But the problem is that this oxygen is not neutral to the organization. That impacts the business model. Now, if you think about the business model of a bank as a web of activities, okay? So when you plug these technologies into an organization, what can you do? I mean, usually in terms of impact on business model, you can do two plus one thing. One thing is that you can replace. So you had John Vito before, you don't like any more John Vito's desk. Let's take a piece of AI to replace John Vito with AI, okay? Or at that side, you can replace legacy activities. Or you can complement. So what technology is doing, I mean, in, in, and wh where many digital transformations start, is somewhere in this space between replacement and complementarity, okay? Now, in terms of more specific implications, this replacement and complementarity often translate in local optimization. For example, Local optimization, okay? What does it mean, local optimization? I mean, you know better than me. You can uh, get, uh, get rid of your analyst that control fraud, uh, for fraud uh, detection and protection. Or uh, uh, Zurich, a case that I studied, the, the, the insurer, they moved from 58 minutes to five seconds in reading medical reports by using AI, okay? That's a replacement, or you can complement, and then, I mean, you can create, I mean, local optimization, or you can play to, play with value curves, so you can improve the value offering, or you can, everyone speak about customer engagement, and I have, sp I mean, I, I cannot tell you how many boards, they don't even know why they are doing customer engagement. If I ask you why are you doing customer engagement, they don't know. Oh, to understand needs. Or, well, I mean, customer engagement is done usually because, I mean, engage customers, the research shows they tend to buy more. So customer engagement means sales. Now, some people think that customer engagement also brings customer centricity, but that's a completely different story. Because for becoming customer centric, you need to completely turn the table. You need to change your process in terms of product development, in terms of marketing. There's a, a significant confusion. And then, I mean, you can use technology for new, new ways of working. What, I mean, but this is really not really a transformation, okay? These capabilities, are pretty as is. You take your organization, you take your business model, you plug technology, you, you improve, you change around this, this, this dimension. Where digital technologies are really transformational is they also enable to do things in a new way, okay? And the real transformation is at the intersection of replacement complementarity and new ways of doing things. So when you, start, when you start also doing things differently, you move from local optimization to, doing, to embracing ecosystem. That's a completely different approach. Or when you, you can move from value curve innovation to value transformation, customer engagement to customer centricity, or new ways of working towards employee engagement. I will give you an example for each of them. You, um, I trust you have seen this uh, uh, slide, no? So what does it mean? HSBC, all companies, I mean, HSBC product and services have been, are being eroded by plenty of fintech. For each and every product or service that HSBC has, there are hundreds of fintech trying to do, try to, to steal that part of market from HSBC. So, HSBC can try to fight back, or they can try to partner with these companies, and when they do better than HSBC, they can basically create I mean, an ecosystem whereby together they co-deliver co value. And I mean, that's actually the trend. Ba banks are using more and more fintech not to fight them, but to cooperate with them. What is the other thing? Value value transformation as opposed to value innovation. When you use digital technologies, for example, for, with iPhone, now I don't know whether you have noticed, iPhone is moving away, away from being a smartphone. You know what is the revolution that I mean, uh, Tim Cook is instilling at iPhone? When you connect an iPhone with your heart, with your pulse, 
the greatest contribution to mankind will be health. The piece of technology that we have in our pockets and our bags is being commoditized very quickly. And you can, if you don't trust me, you can also see in the way in which now an iPhone is sold. If you go to Apple down the street, wherever it is, uh, Oxford Street, you will see that, I mean, they start offering an iPhone as a subscription. What does this mean? You are not buying anymore an iconic piece of technology. You are buying a commodity, a gateway, that then connected with some sensor to your heart becomes your health, your health check constant. Clear? This is value transformation. I mean, that, that's not me saying it. That's uh, Tim Cook saying it. In fact, I mean, also the way in which that will, will evolve, Apple will start selling the service. Now, think about how much it costs the NHS in the UK or in the US. If, I mean, they manage to position themselves as your 24 hour, seven days, 365 um, doctor, you will, I mean, $1,000 every two years is nothing. You, can, you are happy to pay $200 per month. If they can tell you that you are, I mean, in advance that you are about to have a stroke, who is not going to pay this money to, 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 to Apple? So, and then, I mean, customer engagement, which is what people do, versus customer centricity. Now, customer engagement is mostly about, I mean, keeping as is and then to sell more. Customer centricity starts with the customer and then you develop product. That's a very different transformation. And then, I mean, many people speak about, I mean, new ways of working, but there is plenty that is being done with technology to engage employees to have more productivity. So the story is that the, the capabilities that you offer are plenty and go from the as is transformation to the real transformation, which is, I mean, the next step that many companies now are trying to do. Now, so what? So the, up to now is strategy, right? But I mean, so what? Well, now there is, I mean, what my research shows is that, I mean, what I mean, we are understanding, not only me, is that, I mean, when you build a digital core, things change significantly in organization. Trans making this letter becoming an email, uh, an email Basically means that I mean you lose uh, Newton, so things don't fall anymore. The Newton law gets uh, not is not anymore relevant because I mean everything that is digital tends to become much more uh, software-like. So digital artifacts that become uh, uh, physical artifacts that become digital, they tend to acquire attributes that are typical software, such as editability, granularity, homogeneity, modularity, and you, you, uh, you can read for yourself. And then when you connect them, they tend to, to get, to acquire uh, attributes that are typical of connected digital artifacts, speed, ubiquity. What is the point? Once companies start adopting digital technology, not only the business model gets modified, but also the culture has to change. Because once you, your, the gravity gets defeated and you have everything software, this basically means that you become much more software-like. And now, if you look also at all other transformations that, are, that I quickly, um, let's say, described. This basically means that you also have to in, uh, introduce into your organization a culture of value co-delivery and more and more market experimentation, execution experimentation. Now, go to a bank with billions in compliance and speak about market experimentation and execution experimentation. I mean, they will laugh at you. Right? They will laugh at us. They will laugh at me. But unfortunately, this is the reality if you want to stay in the game. So what companies do often, they make, a, they make a mess in the digital transformation. Often, they just focus, I mean, I'm just not going to all of them. Maybe they understand the opportunity and threat, and they spend money in, in the digital core, but they don't change the strategy, and they don't change the business model. What is the result of this? Frustration. Or they focus on the external, but they don't change the strategy, and they change just bottom-up uh, uh, the, the business model, and they spend money on the digital core. What is the result of this? L lack of purpose. I mean, chaos. So if you want to get the real transformation done, you need to focus on all different aspects. Understanding what are the trends that you want to react to, and the ones that you want to embrace. What is the purpose, the identity of the bank going forward, or the insurance going forward? 
what, of course you need to spend, I mean, the digital core is a massive undertaking, both in terms of conceptual capabilities and money that you have to pour, and of course you need to do the changes here. So that's what the transformation is. So basically the takeaway is that if you want to be successful, yes, this is technology-enabled transformation, but it's business model-driven. So you need to start. Of course you need to spend a lot of money in, in the digital core, but the process of decision-making should be understanding the trends, understanding what you want to react to, and then making the strategic choices, and then changing the business model. Now, that's basically what I've tried to tell, told you, tell you in a very rushed way. Any questions? I mean, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Dan.